So welcome to this episode of Cooking with Cindy. Today we're going to do our annual Christmas recipe. Yeah, so if you check out this video up here, we're in our December holiday kind of mode. Yeah. Last year we did Glühwein. So, right, so um, check out that recipe. And this year we're gonna do the Williamsburg cookies. Right, we were inspired by the cookies that we got on our latest trip. Or uninspired, or maybe. Un maybe uninspired. And it's still soft. Has a nice gingerbread taste, but it's a little dry. Hmm. So I would say this is probably not as good as I remember. I think it's a COVID cookie. It's because they have to make them way in advance and package them. They can't make them fresh like in the bakery. Right. This is not. Th these are not as good as they used to be, and it's not as good as what I can make. And so we talked about. We remembered how they were and how good they were and how we they, were able to replicate it many years ago. Right. We. They used to be more brown, and they were nothing like what I got at Williamsburg this time around. Right, so we're gonna show you how to make the best Williamsburg cookie of all time. Exactly, like it used, used to be. Make. Right, and because we're an RV channel primarily, we gotta show you how to do it in the RV, but it's all winterized, so put to bed, but. But. The Dutch oven hat's gonna come out. And we're gonna do a bake off. And we're gonna do a smackdown, a cooking smackdown, which I know not to <laughs> go with her, but. We're gonna get out of that Dutch oven and show you how to do it in that one too. Right, and so we don't know how that's gonna turn out. Should be interesting. I've never burned anything we were in the hat. Well, we'll see. All right. Well, hope you enjoy the video. What? So we're gonna start with our wet ingredients. We are halving the recipe today because the full recipe makes 48 three inch cookies. And so this recipe will make somewhere between 20 and 24 cookies. Which recipe is gonna be on our webpage? We're gonna print the full recipe because that's the one that my mom put together. So that's the original. So, but today for purposes of cooking for us, for just the two of us, we're gonna half it. So we're gonna start with one egg. We, uh, like to have the egg at room temperature because it blends with the sugar and the shortening much better that way. Next is a half a cup of brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar or dark brown sugar, your choice. And a half a cup of shortening. And here's an interesting tidbit. It is state law in the state of Vermont that all businesses and all private consumers like us are required to compost. So we're gonna take this eggshell and we're gonna put it in our compost bin so that we're not violating the law. We're law-abiding citizens. So next we're gonna add a half a cup of molasses. We're gonna just blend this all together till it's nice and smooth. So once this is done and it's all nice and smooth as you can see, we are going to set it aside and work on our dry ingredients. So we're gonna start with two cups of flour, a teaspoon and a half of ground ginger, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon each of nutmeg and ground cloves. And then we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. And we're gonna blend these all together. So we have our blended flour mixture with all the spices and the salt and the baking soda. So we're gonna just slowly add this to the bowl. And we're gonna blend. And of course, while that's being blended, I'm gonna go ahead and check out the SpaceX launch of a Sirius XM satellite. So as you can see, this is making a really thick dough. So we're gonna loosen this up a little bit with our last ingredient, which is a quarter cup of whole milk 
with a half teaspoon of lemon juice. And that's just a, called a sour milk. It's that time when everybody smiles, eyes are shining bright. I still remember how I used to feel. Look at us now, walking around in the snow. Okay, so we're starting to get ready for the Dutch oven part of the cooking, and because we've never done cookies in our Dutch oven, we have to do a little bit of prep work. And that involved me taking my handy dandy dividers, sketching out a three inch diameter circle, cutting it out, and then putting them into the Dutch oven to say, eh, we could probably get four cookies this time. So it won't be a high volume operation, but we'll see how it goes. We do it in a very Christmas way. All right, so we've got our coals going. My Dutch oven guide, which you can see here, shows that for 375 degrees, we need exactly 23 briquettes. So that's what we've got cooking here. I'm gonna load those. This is kind of my setup here for when I'm doing Dutch oven at home. I have a piece of concrete there. This serves as a windbreak. I've got my trivet, you can see the trivet. And we'll arrange the coals just like our guide says. We'll get this thing heating on up to 375. Soon there will be sleigh bells and Santa Claus. So while Rich is outside setting up his Dutch oven, we're gonna do this the more conventional way inside and we're gonna set our oven for 375. So we're ready to pull our dough out of the fridge. It's been in there about four hours and so we're going to get ready to roll it out. So as you can see, I've covered my, my marble board here with a piece of parchment paper and I've heavily coated it in flour. I'm going to put this dough out onto the board. There we go. It's, it's very sticky dough. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put flour on top of that and just sort of mash it down a little bit. We're going to make sure our rolling pin is heavily floured. You don't want to mix the flour in with the dough, you just want to coat the top and the bottom liberally with it. And we're going to just roll the dough out to about a quarter of an inch. Like so. And we're going to dip our cutter in. And cut our little, little circles. I was just dusting a little bit more flour on the top and we're about ready to put these in the oven. And they go in for 15 to 18 minutes. So I'll check them in 15. So the cookies have been in for about 17 minutes and I think they are ready to come out. You can see they look slightly brown on the bottom and that's what you're looking for. And you're gonna put them, pull them out and they're gonna sit on the top of the oven for two minutes before you try to transfer them to a cooling rack. So you can see my cookies poofed up in the middle and they're ready to transfer. This is what a Williamsburg cookie should look like. Not that, it, it, I would give them credit that the uh, Williamsburg cookie that I got looked sort of like this, but it did not have that dark, rich color that these have. Yeah. And they don't have the fresh flavor as well. So I'm also gonna give them this extra sprinkle of flour just to enhance that rustic look. All right, we've got the Dutch oven cooking hat on and we're ready to put our cookies in to see if we can make a better cooking than Cindy. So, cool tool here. Lifts the lid, right? Yep. Set that right there. There. 
All right, with a little help from Cindy, we'll put this back on. And set the timer for 15 minutes and we'll check them out. All right, because we're gonna be on for about 16, 17 minutes, every four minutes, I'm gonna rotate the kettle one way and the lid the other way to ensure we get even heating. We'll do that a quarter of a turn. So we'll bring this guy around. Quarter of a turn that way. And we'll move the lid. Quarter turn or so the other way. That ensures nice even heating. Of course, we're keeping accurate temperature readings with our sensor. Okay, so our timer's gone off. It's been about just over 16 minutes, and we're gonna take a peek. This should be good. They're looking good? I think they look pretty good. Are they ready to come out? I think they are. Okay. I mean, you so check, check them out. I'm gonna have my expert come over here and... Oh yeah. Coming out, looking good. Look at that bottom. Oh, Ooh. dog. Looking pretty spectacular. Let's bring them in and let them cool. It's the number So there you have it, our finished product. Yep, so uh, the next part is the best part, and that's... Uh, a taste test. Right, and seeing whose is better. Well, these are the ones you cooked in the Dutch oven, and these are the ones we cooked in the conventional oven. And we're also gonna compare them to the Williamsburg cookie that we had right. before. Yep, so, so let's go ahead. Okay, let's so select one. That one's mine. She intentionally took the crappiest of my cookies to, for the official not. taste. All right, so we're gonna do a comparison. We'll look inside, see what it looks like. Mine feels soft. Yours feels soft. Mine's slightly crispy, but good. Mm -hmm. I think I left it in the oven just a hair too long. Much better than the, the uh, Williamsburg cookie, though. Yeah. Let's see how yours... Yours is less crisp, so yours might be the better. Mm. Mm. For some reason, you have a better crust, but your cookie seems a little drier. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's a tie. All right. That's very diplomatic of you. Pretty good. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And click the subscribe if you think we've earned a subscription. And comment below if you have a favorite Christmas cookie that you like to make for Christmas or right. the holidays. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday with the occasional cooking for Cindy. Story. And Rich. Yeah, and me too. This is not bad. It's not pretty bad. good. Hmm. Thanks for watching. <laughs>